Everyone's punctual today. Thank you so much. Great to see you. How are you? Round of applause for Mark. Hey, uh, congrats to all the other finalists. Great job. Uh, Mark Seiden with Cloudwater. Um, for me, there's not a cloud in the sky today. I love my job. I love this brand. I love the people. I know that there's a lot of Cloudwater people tuning in today and watching. And I just have to say thank you. It's a privilege to work with you guys. Uh, I wear this badge with honor. And no matter what happens today, the outcome, we win. This is a great validation of our existence, our vision, um, our grind. Uh, and to you, Jules, and especially to my good friend and co-founder, Barry Kelman, who approached me just under a year ago with this crazy idea to start a beverage company that his sister ran a flavor lab in New Jersey and that we can make some really killer, uh, killer products. Um, and the more we thought about it, the more we dreamt about it, the more we drank about it, and the more we studied how great CBD was becoming mainstream, our brand and our vision was born. And that was to be the leading CBD brand. And in order to pull that off, we knew we had to deliver a very differentiated, premium, transparent, and good for you experience to our consumer. From the second she sees the bottle till she opens it and tastes it, till she spins it around and looks at the ingredients knowing there's integrity, all right, especially the CBD, from bud to bottle, knowing that we only use the, the most, uh, the most um, pure ingredients and we prove it. So playing on some of my prior experience running businesses and exiting a few, I knew that in order to deliver on this crazy vision and to, uh, to uh, and take part in this market, we had to create stellar products and an amazing team. And that's exactly what we did. And we started with Ellie, uh, who ran Citramax Labs, who helped us launch our initial two flavors, grapefruit, mint, and basil, and blood orange, and coconut. I'm also happy to announce we're launching our third at the end of the month, blackberry, lemon, and rosemary. But Ellie also lets us into the lab whenever we want to, to create new flavors, uh, follow market trends, so that we can be on demand as the market dictates it. And then our friend David Linker at Hillside Beverage, who, uh, who doesn't impose high line fees, or, or, or manufacturing minimums, so that we could keep up with the cadence of the market, but not over-manufacture, especially considering all the regulatory client. To Dr. Carol Dollard, former COO of Vitamin Water, who's joined us to scale, she also holds a PhD in biochemistry. We're actually making our own CBD in our lab that's proving to be more stable than anything we've tested and a fraction of the cost. It's a game changer for us. And Alex Galindez, who has run Runa and, and, and Blueprint, who are now head of our strategy, helping us create a very thoughtful go-to-market strategy so we could scale with confidence. So we took all of this and went to market in January. The, the mandate was get into revenue and listen. We're in over 125 doors, self-distributed, um, in uh, high-end retail and on-premise. But what we learn from our customer is invaluable. It's the key to our scale, in my opinion. Our customer taught us that Cloudwater is incredibly versatile and that she uses us throughout our day. All right, and that, that we should, our brand message should be less about chill and more about on the go, like active recovery. She taught us that she uses us in the morning, before a meeting, uh, and, and to replace her glass of wine at night. So what we did is we created our, uh, our, what we call our, our availability network, or go-to-market strategies. It simply mirrors where our consumer tells us she wants to be. And uh, we created a multi-channel, uh, excuse me, a multi-channel strategy that will mirror this. So we start with our direct-to-consumer. As Zach was saying yesterday, it keeps a really tight communication loop, your ear to the ground with your customer. You can also test things at that level before you scale. On-premise, which highly differentiates us and offers great margins for us and our trade partner. And of course, when we want to lose money, there's uh, traditional retail. But we're gonna do that, we're gonna do that aggressively. And I'm happy to say we're, in, or, excuse me, we're in current talks with major distributors <clears throat> to, to pull that off. Some of the greatest feedback we got was, you guys' packets are amazing, but if you want to scale, you have to be more nimble. So we are uh, producing our premium aluminum bottles at the end of this month with our new flavors. We're really excited about the plan. Hey, Barry, our vision. 
It's alive. Not only that, I think we got a shot here. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Nicely done. Nice t-shirt, by the way. Um, it's a rental. <laughs> uh, Dan, Mark talked a lot about the business strategy, the go-to-market strategy for cloud water. What do you th what's your thoughts? I'd love to just hear a little more how you're thinking about navigating the regulatory environment as you know, retailers like Whole Foods are still waiting to see what happens with uh, regulation. So can you talk a little about your get-to-market strategy in, in light sure. of that? And second, also, talk a little about contingency plans. Okay. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, so <laughs> I think when you have a plan B, I don't know if you believe in your plan A, but I will <laughs> address that. So um, we are very concerned about the regulatory environment. In fact, we are working with lobbyists in New York and in Washington to um, have a peripheral seat in the room, if you will. Um, we're getting downloads from the FDA progress. Uh, we're here, I don't know if you want me to share the news, but um, we're actually uh, trying to, we've actually put forth proposal to help shape the regulatory um, framework that's needed to move forward. Uh, we're very confident that it's, it's gonna work itself out both locally and nationally. I don't have a contingency plan. Um, I'd be lying if I did. I believe in this, I'm all in on this. No risk, no reward, my whole team is. And if it doesn't work, then you know what? We're all successful, we'll do it again. Kalam, uh, it was pretty clear from Mark's presentation that they're targeting a female consumer. Do you see that as the, uh, as the right path for Cloudwater? I mean, the product tastes really good. I think a lot of people would like this. It's super refreshing and light. Um, I, I don't know if it needs to be so distinctively female. I just used, I'm sorry to clarify, yeah. I just used she instead of he. Okay. All right, I live with three women, so instead <laughs> of saying he or they, I just use she. So no, this is, this is for everybody. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I drink mean, five of these a day. I do think though that getting precise <laughs> on like some of your marketing will be good because you kind of mentioned a lot of occasions that you go after for this consumer and you know, a lot of different need states throughout the day. Like, I, I think maybe getting precise on either a consumer or an occasion and kind of picking something and owning it, especially as you're onboarding a new brand, will help you kind of build that loyal group of consumers and then follow them to see which, you know, paths to take it. Yeah, that's, that's really insightful. And I think that um, w what we learned from our consumer in putting it out there with our hypothesis is that we were wrong that uh, she or they <laughs> were using it throughout the day, yeah. right? And that we actually have a versatile beverage. And I think in all due respect to some other, you know, beverages who are picking a yep. channel, if you're wrong, then, you know, where do you pivot? And I'd rather have a versatility in this where they're drinking three or four a day uh, because it's part of their daily life. And I think if we win that, all right, that might be a little bit more risk, but I mean, that'll propel us ahead as a brand. Do you worry about people drinking a couple of them a day with 25 milligrams of CBD in each time, and how to manage dosing of that or anything? No, I'm the lab rat. I literally drink five a day, and okay. I'm fine. I'm okay. not slurring right now. <laughs> yeah. No, I as mean, look, you know. dosing... How do did you decide on dosing? <laughs> yeah, it's a good, good question. So there's art and science in there. Um, part of it was we wanted to be among the higher um, CBD doses in beverage to differentiate. We looked at, you know, the droppers and the ML, you know, one ML is 25 milligrams, so it seemed to be kind of uh, a threshold in the market could handle, but in the beverage space, it definitely set us apart. We've seen some other beverages come up uh, since we've come out of 25. John, would you doing three or four of these a day, and what do you think of the packaging, that white bottle? Um, well, first of all, I mean, it tastes great. Um, I think, you know, you have something that for sure could appeal broadly. I mean, it's basically like a, you know, a sparkling water replacement, which is, which is great. Um, you know, the packaging, I mean, that would have been the obvious uh, feedback, you know, get out of glass. Um, I think it's a similarly eye-catching bottle to Sunwink, you know, white versus blue. Um, you know, the metal uh, or aluminum, <coughs> excuse me, bottle can thing, uh, I have mixed feelings about. That's been kind of a graveyard of companies that have uh, failed with that. Um, but, you know, hey, I mean, CBD beverages and CBD in general is sort of uh, proven that it's on its own path, so maybe it, you know, it works, uh, it works out for you guys. I mean, it certainly looks great, um, so, you know, nice job on that. Um, I think otherwise, it's just sort of how do you not get hung up on, you know, look, I mean, we spent probably, what, half the time here talking about 
CBD and regulation and this and that, like how do you not get hung up on that? How do you get someone to just, I don't know, feel good about engaging with the, the, with the, the product? Um, you know, I would hope that isn't a barrier for it, but. Yeah. Mm. Um, We're almost out of time, but uh, Lee, do you wanna have a last word on uh, Cloudwater? Sure, yeah, you know, I, understandably things are moving really quickly in the landscape. I think the product feels a little rushed. You know, I think that actually comes through when we first see this format and then now we're presented with a different one. It seems like the usage occasion to Kalam's point is a little unclear or how frequently. And when we talk about maybe a multi-day use, mm -hmm. the sugar is pretty high for that. And what we're already seeing is the trend going the other way. So I feel like the base product needs some work because um, what we're going to look at is actually this is going to come down to a game of cost once there's yep. a whole lot of other products out there. Yep. And so you've got some costs associated with this that I, I think as a a retail account or any other customer might want to see that kind of opened up to understand where that's going to go. That's great. Thank you right. so much for saying that. Appreciate great it. feedback. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank well you. done.